This is a global climate planetary emergency video. There's nothing more definite than the uh, plight of the coral reefs around the world, particularly, of course, the greatest of all, the Great Barrier Reef. There's nothing more definite that makes today's uh, situation a dire planetary emergency, uh, because this is a climate change coral planetary emergency worldwide. I'm Peter Carter. I'm making this video on April 2019. So to start off with, we'll take a look at the Great Barrier Reef thanks to Google Earth. In this video, I have some extracts from uh, Netflix's full-length movie, Chasing Coral, and that is a must-see. I have uh, extracts, the most interesting and important parts of the 2009 Royal Society Lecture, yeah, that's 10 years ago, by the world's leading climate expert, John Charlie Verran. Some film clips of uh, the 2018 CNN Interactive uh, Great Production, The Great Barrier Reef Headed for Massive Death, and that features Charlie Barron. Around the globe, coral reefs are a source of beauty and wonder. Every year, thousands travel just to experience their beauty and witness the abundant life created by these aquatic communities. The reefs are also essential to life on our planet. Some call them the ocean's nursery. At least 25% of marine species live there. But for the last 20 years, life on the reefs has been vanishing. It's called coral bleaching. Higher ocean temperatures, which cause polyps, the animals that live in the coral, to expel algae embedded in their tissues. That algae is what supports life in the reef. The temperature of the water is just literally getting too hot for the corals to survive in. The first global bleaching event took place in 1998, an El Nino year, when ocean temperatures are typically higher. But since then, the recurrence, duration, and severity of these bleaching events has gotten worse. This is what's killing the coral reefs, rapidly increasing ocean surface warming, which is due, of course, to continuing to burn fossil fuels for energy. I have the utmost respect for corals. They're really sophisticated animals. Coral is a fundamental part of a huge ecosystem. There's this big heat wave that's traveling around all over the world. The coral bleaches, and what you're seeing is its skeleton underneath. Then you open your eyes. And it's dead as far as you can see. We don't have any time to waste. If we want to have any hope, we live at a unique moment in time where we can change history. It's not too late for coral reefs. As a quick introduction to Charlie Verran's 2009 uh, Royal Society Lecture, this is an update of atmospheric CO2 concentration which he refers to with respect to damage to the coral reefs. So this clearly shows accelerating atmospheric CO2 concentration, and that is critical with respect to coral bleaching leading to coral death, because of course, atmospheric CO2 concentration is the main cause of global surface warming, including uh, global sea surface or ocean surface warming. This and of course carbon dioxide emissions are the sole cause of ocean acidification, which is also accelerating plotters from 2060 to April this year 2019 and it shows continuous acceleration including just over the past uh, year or two. The record is from the Scripps Institute of Oceanography. Here I've highlighted the 350 parts per million danger limit and that is quite definitely the danger limit for coral reefs. And here, 400 parts per million, which Charlie Verran predicted in 2009, would lead to widespread severe bleaching and 
tragically, he has been proved right. This record shows that today's atmospheric CO2 concentration in April 2019 has reached 410 parts per million, and it is still accelerating and increasing faster than ever. So bear in mind, during the lecture that we are today, 10 years on at 410 parts per million CO2. Charlie Varon uh, is known as Charlie Varon because he knew when he was a boy uh, they called him Mr. Darwin uh, because of his obsession uh, with the natural world, something which a lot of us, I think, perhaps can feel about. Uh, but we are singularly fortunate, for he is one of the great authorities in the world on coral. Indeed, uh, he has identified, discovered, and described about a third of the coral species that we know. He has produced the definitive works, catalogues of the corals. One thing to know about reef, reefs is because they live in such a precarious position on the planet, they are b uh, uh, prone to boom and bust cycles. So that if you had a, uh, a camera mounted up in space and you looked at Earth, uh, and that was a time-lapse camera over millions of years, you would see reefs form and disappear, form and disappear, form and disappear, all according to climate cycles. And so they record those climate cycles with great accuracy. Most of the reefs from so long ago are long since gone but some have been lifted up uh, out of the water and we see there a huge reef that, has, uh, that lived once so long ago, uh, over 400 uh, million years ago. A very small proportion of the diversity lived on, evolution kicked in, and we have some of the grandest coral reef remains today. That's the Austrian, the calcareous Alps of Austria, which are huge, as you would know, uh, they're coral reefs that formed um, during the, uh, during the J Jurassic era. The, 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 and we're right into the time of the dinosaurs now. That's right. Okay, that is the history of mass extinctions. And there's a history very much written by coral reefs because they have such an intricate relationship with the carbon cycle. Carbon dioxide. The dotted lines are rough. The solid lines are, yeah, pretty much okay. And what we see is huge changes in, car in, in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere over this huge amounts of time. And these are the mass extinction events. And on a finer scale, not on this scale, but on a finer scale, four of those five mass extinctions uh, correspond with a very, very uh, steep increase in the build-up of carbon dioxide. I'm going to move on to mass bleaching. That is the, the, the devil of coral reefs at the moment. The impacts of coral reefs have been enormous. And as you might know, uh, corals have algae in their tissues. The algae, the little pitch at the top, and it's the algae that provides something like 90% of the food and oxygen that coral needs. So the, the coral is really dependent on the algae. Well, if you raise the temperature just a little above them, what a coral really likes, you plunge it into overheating. It doesn't hurt the coral directly, but the algae love it, and they produce too much oxygen, and it's the oxygen that kills the corals. The corals have got to get rid of that, those tissues or die. Well, if they do get rid of the, the algae, they're going to die anyhow. Because this silly thing happens because for literally for millions of years, Corals have not had to do this. This hasn't happened. It is something that only started in the 1980s. It's probably, it hasn't happened for millions of years before that. So it is, a, it is something that blights corals because they're not designed to cope with the amount of oxygen produced by these high temperatures. So we might take a nice pretty reef today, a nice lot of fish, nice little staghorn corals everywhere, and in a matter of a couple of weeks, we can turn it into that by a single pulse of overly warm water. And this has happened um, many, many, many times in virtually all the coral reefs of the world. That pretty white coral soon becomes that. It becomes rubble. And, 
as you can see, not much habitat is preserved. But all is not lost. If the environment is good, if the, if the uh, water quality is all there, corals can come back. And they're very, very good at doing this. They're very, very good at recovering from being trashed by crown of thorn starfish, by cyclones, by anything. And they're good at recovering, being trashed by uh, mass bleaching. doesn't matter what the cause, they start growing back. And so that's what happens. They start growing back. So the coral reef on the left can become the coral reef on the, on the right in a matter of a few months. And in about 10 years or so, that cycle can be returned. In other words, the, that, that rubble on the right can become a pretty looking coral reef all over again. But mass bleaching is really something to behold. So a lot, of, a lot of marine life is affected by mass bleaching, but it's the corals that create the habitat that um, uh, when they bleach, that habitat becomes destroyed. And you may think that perhaps some people have said, well, mass bleaching may have, may have uh, been going on. It's just because a lot of scuba divers today, well, I've been scuba diving for a lot longer than that, and I've never seen mass bleaching before 1980, and I'm sure I would have noticed it. And that is a photograph of a, a coral colony. It's about 600 years old. It's a very common photograph, this, because there are, there are loads of these great big old colonies ending up to 1,000 years, uh, forming rows as long as a city block or more, and they're all dead. Uh, so this is something that is, that is pretty recent. It is something that happened, started happening in the early 1980s. So we're going to have a look at the concentration of carbon dioxide and what it's meant for the Great Barrier Reef as, as a representative of all reefs. At 320 parts per million of carbon dioxide, there's probably no harm to coral reefs in the long term. When the concentration came up to 350 parts per million, we got periodic mass bleaching all over the Great Barrier Reef and the Caribbean and a lot of Indian Ocean sites as well. Uh, all over all the major coral reefs of the world. If we increase this carbon dioxide in our great global experiment we're conducting now to 400 parts per million, and we're going to do that pretty soon, um, and 400 parts per million will cause severe bleaching, mainly due, mainly due El Nino years, mainly due to the times, the natural weather cycles that bring warm water uh, across the uh, warm water or warm temperature anomalies across the Indian and Pacific Oceans. By all means, think this was a miserable talk. But please, I beg of you, think of the issues that are involved at the destruction of coral reefs. <clears throat> they beg belief. They're, there's something nobody should have to stand up here and say, but it is reality. Please, some of you have got influence in this matters. Some of you have got a lot of influence. But whatever your influence, be it big or small, please, after you leave this building, please use it, talk about it, think about it, because our whole future of this planet depends on this story and stories much like it being recognised and approached as something that is reality. This is not a fairy tale. This is reality. plunge into aquamarine waters and into a world so fantastic that words cannot do it justice. 
Just below the surface, Charlie shows me forests of coral home to schools of neon fish. Sticks his hand into a giant clam that draws sustenance from the sun and points out phosphorescent coral that glows beneath the water. Everywhere you look, something amazing seems to be happening. But then we move locations and Charlie starts to get more serious. He takes me back in the water to see the impact up close of climate change. Forests of coral cooked to death as far as the eye can see. Almost all of it covered in brown slime. We've got now also the phenomenon of a mass extinction looming. We take out coral reefs and a third to a quarter of, of, of all marine species get wiped out. Now that's, that is ecological chaos. See, decades ago, I never dreamed that a great barrier reef would uh, be like it is now. The problem is the data points to more and more frequent marine heat waves in the future. Now the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, their 2018 1.5 degree C special report was uh, highly definite and specific on coral reefs with respect to uh, the impact of 1.5 degrees C and of 2 degrees C. I've underlined here, these are screen captures, coral reefs would decline by 70 to 90 percent with global warming of 1.5 degrees C, whereas virtually all would be lost with 2 degrees C. So I'm going to repeat that. At 1.5 degrees C, we lose 70 to 90 percent of the world's coral reefs. At 2 degrees C, we lose them all. <laughs>